So, Star Fox Zero on the Wii U. It's one of those games that has not been ported to the Nintendo Switch as of yet. And there's reasons to as why. I think the thing is way too reliant on the Wii U gamepad. I think you might be able to emulate this. You would need like something similar to a gamepad or possibly the gamepad itself. I've seen Steam Deck emulation of this thing, but I don't know how good that is. Also, the Steam Deck isn't as available as a Switch or some tablet thing. So what are my opinions on this game? Well, let's find out. Star Fox Zero was announced at E3 2015, maybe a little before 2014, I don't know when, but Miyamoto was showing it off just playing the game. And he was said to be working on some games like Project Guard and Project Robo, which those never came out except Project Guard did come out, but not as Project Guard, rather than a bundled game with Star Fox Zero. There was a lot of hype leading up to the release of this game. I decided to pre-order it at GameStop. Still, I have my receipt right here. The game had a lot of cool announcements such as Platinum Games working on this thing. There was some cool animations done by Nintendo or commissioned. And also the presentation was also fun to watch. Just seeing the CEOs of Nintendo move around as puppets was very entertaining. And then they transformed into furries. I was a little surprised by that, so let's just try this game out first. Star Fox Guard on the Nintendo Wii U. Originally known as Project Guard. I'm gonna try to sync any gameplay I have up with the gamepad to my best ability. Yeah, this is like a security guard camera type of game. The Wii U gamepad controls the cameras and the screen as well. The camera and you shoot at these robots. I could never really get much into this game, it's pretty simplistic. Nothing too offensive here, nothing like insulting to the series, just a simple game. Yeah, you probably couldn't turn this into like a full $60 game, but uh, nothing wrong here. So let's try Star Fox, the first game since the GameCube era. Well, there have been some before, but I don't think people count those. Specifically, Star Fox Command. I don't think people like this game. I bought this as a kid and I really did enjoy it. I beat the whole game and did all the routes and all that stuff. But yeah, I guess it's not a mainline Star Fox game and Star Fox 3D was a remake of the N64 game. Well then, we got the hype around this. Developed by Platinum Games, Nintendo. The first Star Fox game in a while. We saw trailers before, people were saying that the graphics looked bad. I thought it looked alright, I don't think they were bad, per se. Well then, let's pop the game in and let's find out what we think about this game. By we, I mean a lot of people. The general consensus on this game. I figured out what the hell was wrong with this game. The controls are fucking horrible. What were they thinking? And yes, I know that might be a throw back to someone else but come on this is exactly the type of critique you would give this game just based on a first impression you get a tutorial at the beginning of the game telling you how to play this game it's very complicated well not too complicated just annoying see the button mapping right here you got that good because you're just gonna have a hard time with this at least I did it's a weird thing you see your ship third person view on a TV screen, and the cockpit is the first person view. It's very hard to control. So you move the gamepad around to move your reticle around to shoot stuff. And you would think that would be kind of easy, but it's really not. It's just, it gives you this thing where you have to multitask. Kind of like texting and driving. You're looking at the same thing in front of you. It's kind of weird. And it might look like I suck at this game. Why am I missing so much? Well, if you want precision in this game, look down at the gamepad. You actually hit your targets that way. It's kind of hard to do when you're moving around. You kind of have to like look at both screens at the same time. I guess this would make more sense on a 3DS because both screens are like close together but not a gamepad in the television screen. Also the 3DS did have a gyroscope built into it but I've never used it. You'd look stupid playing this if it were on the 3DS just because it's a handheld system. We're not going to talk more about the game. It's This is pretty much the main gripe I have with this, so just dove right into this with the controls. It's 
so bad. It's like, you know when you're a kid and you're playing like a racing game and you turn your controller to the direction you want it to go and it's not going to do a damn thing? Well, it's like doing that in this game. It doesn't exactly work the way you want it to. Or it does, but it's, it's just very hard to explain it. It's pretty much just multitasking. It's really annoying. And it also doesn't stop there. It just continues. I don't think this thing needed a gamepad. It's just not a good way to play like a game that where you're a jet fighter or a spaceship. I think this needed a flight stick or something like that because that makes more sense than this. This is complicated because you're looking both at first and third person view and it's it's like texting while driving. I think I gave that explanation before but it's I don't understand it. It's weird. It's just overcomplicating a simple thing to do. It doesn't stop there. You get more vehicles to drive around in, such as the little land walker thing. And I know it looks like I'm sucking at this. Again, I'm just having a hard time moving around and shooting just because I have to like look at both screens. There's the tank, which just drives around as usual. You would move it around with the stick and control the camera around with the gamepad. I guess it's the same as the spaceship or the, or the jet fire, whatever it's called. The more quirky thing here is this completely unnecessary and not fun thing to drive around is the little hovercraft. You would think driving the hovercraft itself would be sufficient enough, but no, they have to add this robot that you can collect coins with. I'm not sure what you can buy with these coins or anything, but he, he's used around to shoot targets too and get in small spaces while hacking doors and cameras and stuff. It's just another thing to worry about. It's just annoying. Well, I was playing the boss battles and the controls didn't hinder me in that much. I at least got to beat them. I guess because there's a free roam mode in this. It wasn't too hard. I just rather play it normally without this motion control and gamepad. Well then, let's get to the gamepad features, I guess. As you might have noticed, or if I played any clip that has character dialogue, you won't hear it on the screen, on your TV screen that is. But it comes through to the gamepad itself, and this is great, this sounds fine. But if you're recording or streaming this, it's not going to sound good. It's just a good way to immerse yourself in the game, and I think that's fine. I'm getting some strong energy readings from in here. Blow up that energy source! And right here, you can see, you can, as you can see, you can turn off the motion control, at least some of it, but it doesn't really help me play this game at all. It's still not that great. I wouldn't know how you would translate this to the Nintendo Switch. I guess it would make it more fun as a normally controlled game. That is, I don't know how to translate this, I guess just get rid of the gamepad first person view shit. Well then, this is a Star Fox game after all, so let's talk about the characters and all that stuff. So the music, it's Star Fox, it sounds great. Can't complain anything about this at all. The graphics, they look fine, I don't understand the complaints about this. Could they be better? Probably. I think stylistically it looks fine. Can't make any complaints here either. From what I've read, it says that these were carried over from a cancelled Wii game, so maybe that could be the reason why it looks like this. I still think it looks fine, especially something like the Desert Planet. As for the story and the whole thing, you I don't think you'll play these games for that reason, but it's sort of a soft reboot of the Star Fox game, specifically Star Fox on the Nintendo 64 is what it is, but it doesn't play anything like that like at all. So Crystal isn't in this game. But the game is structured a lot like Star Fox 64, you play a stage, you can take different routes, but each stage has something different for you to do, like drive a different type of vehicle or try to fight a boss. So there's a lot of variety in this game. But every boss is just like the worst thing to play. Specifically this stage right here, I was just taking forever to beat this guy, I didn't know I could transform the tank into a ship. Even with that known, I still took forever to beat this. And also playing this, my like my neck hurts, like looking up and down. This is a actual play, pain to play this. I cannot stand this game. It's just so unnecessary. And like last time, whenever I got this game, I got stuck at the Andros part. 
Like, there's this part right here where you have to shoot at his hand while he is, like entraps you, but I can never get out of it no matter how fast I shoot. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, so whatever. And I took a couple of tries and I still couldn't beat him. I almost had him at the last second, but I ran out of lives and, well, I'm not going to go through all that again. So the game does have replayability. You can beat this in like 3 or 4 hours. So you can choose different routes, choose different levels to go to, and try to get the high scores of any of these type of levels. I just didn't bother doing any of that or collecting any of the medals. I think once was enough for this. I don't need to play this again. I'd rather play the N64 game or the 3DS remake. So here's the ending of the last boss. I didn't beat it, but here's some footage. In conclusion, the game I think could have been pretty decent to play. It's just too gimmicky for my liking. I just don't like looking up and down between screens. It's annoying. I've heard comparisons to Splatoon, but Splatoon doesn't make me look between two screens at once. It doesn't hurt my neck playing either. And yes, you can master this, but it's just a hassle and just not worth it so yeah the game could have been pretty good it's just i'm not a fan of these controls music graphics it's all there so i'd give it a i'd say like a 5 out of 10 because the controls are just a big hindrance to me would i recommend this uh sure just as a experience of what the wii u could do also you should probably buy it because this game looks like it could be a rare thing one day you know, many Wii U's weren't sold, so yeah, I think, I think that would be a good idea to buy this. Even just to experience it yourself. Seems Nintendo sold a surplus of these games, so who knows. But as for what comes next, you might ask, uh, well, I'm gonna find a cool jean jacket for this patch that I got for my GameStop pre-order. And the next game, well, the next Star Fox game I might look at would be Star Fox Adventures on the... GameCube. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Nintendo 64 64 64 64